Welcome, traveler, to the sanctuary of Asclepios, a place of rest and healing. My name is Herodotus, and I am a traveler from Harikanassus. I retrace the cause of various events, such as wars and great calamities. I describe what I see and record what I'm told all with the aim of providing a better understanding of why these things occur. Look for me to introduce you to many sites. The sanctuary of Asclepios is an amazing place, even for those with only a passing interest in medicine. It was a fascinating location, combining the mystical, religious, and scientific. And if someone happened to pass out, they'd luckily be surrounded by skilled physicians. This is the sanctuary of Asclepios, the god of medicine. It was here that the sick and weary came, seeking cures for their ailments. Sometimes the medical practitioners provided the cures, and sometimes the healing came from the gods themselves. This tour will help explain the inner workings of the sanctuary, as well as the unique way the Greeks approached medicine. I hope you enjoy yourself. I'll be waiting for you at the end of your visit. The ill and infirm came to this sanctuary to pray and offer sacrifices to Asclepios, the god of medicine. According to myth, Asclepios was once a mortal physician who eventually became a god. He had many sanctuaries across Greece, but the most famous was in Epidaurus. When pilgrims passed through the entrance of the sanctuary, they could read this inscription. When you enter the abode of the god which smells of incense, you must be pure, and thought is pure when you think with piety. Medical steles constituted a sort of hub between medicine, religion, and the divine. They were slabs with inscriptions that praised Asclepios's virtues and merit and described his methods of healing. The inscriptions relayed the dreams patients had within the abaton, one of the most important buildings in the sanctuary. The steles outlined the patient's name, their disease, and how they were cured by Asclepios. They were probably written by the sanctuary's priests, or at least under the priest's supervision. Asclepius was a complex deity. In addition to being a god, he was also a trained physician and disciple of the centaur Chiron.
In ancient Greece, religion was inseparable from rites, processions, and sacrifices. This was no different in Epidaurus, and visitors to Asclepios' sanctuary needed to prepare themselves accordingly. Pilgrims cleaned themselves in order to be pure, then offered Asclepios food like honey cakes, cheesecakes, baked meats, and figs. The food was placed on the sanctuary's holy table, where it was presumably later taken by priests. After the preliminary offerings, visitors were allowed to enter the abaton, where they would hopefully encounter Asclepios in a dream. Medical steles also mention that healed patients sometimes gave additional offerings to Asclepios as thanks for being cured. Asclepius was originally born a mortal and was the product of an affair between the god Apollo and a mortal, Coronis. Apollo killed Coronis after discovering she had been unfaithful and ordered her body burned on a funeral pyre. However, he rescued his unborn child from Coronis' womb before the fire consumed her body. Apollo gave the baby to the centaur Chiron, who raised Asclepius and taught him to practice medicine. Over time, Asclepios became so skilled in the art of healing, he could even raise the dead. This angered Zeus, who sent Asclepios to Hades with a thunderbolt. Apollo retaliated by killing the Cyclopes responsible for making Zeus's thunderbolts. Then, Zeus revived Asclepios, making him immortal and deifying him in the process. In sculptures, pottery, mosaics, and coins, Asclepius was portrayed holding a staff intertwined with a sacred snake. The staff is a symbol of medicine that still endures to this day.
Ε, τι συνέβη μόλις. The Epidotian was the priest's residence. As the link between patients and the gods, priests were essential to the operation of the sanctuary. They were often elected into the priesthood for one-year periods, but could also buy themselves a position if they were wealthy enough. In addition to interpreting patients' dreams in the abaton, priests both supervised and performed sacrifices and rituals. During these functions, they were usually clad in white. The abaton was built in the northern boundary of the sanctuary, where it surrounded a sacred well whose water was believed to have therapeutic properties. The abaton was where pilgrims went for incubation, or dream rituals. Details of the incubation ritual have been described in unearthed medical steles. They were also noted in Aristophanes' play Plutos, which featured a more comedic view of the process.
Incubation was the dream ritual pilgrims experienced in the Abaton. After completing the necessary preliminary rituals, pilgrims were allowed to enter the sacred building where they lay prone. As they took in the smell of burning incense, the sanctuary's priests extinguished the oil lamps and asked them to sleep in silence. Once they were asleep, Asclepios would appear in their dreams and give his medical advice. The advice included diet and treatment recommendations, as well as requests for specific offerings or religious rituals. Upon waking up, priests interpreted the patient's dreams, unless a patient had been miraculously healed in their sleep. However, if a patient was completely beyond help, they were removed from the abaton. This was to adhere to a ritual law that stated that no one could die or be born within the building. I see you've completed the tour. I hope you enjoyed your time in the sanctuary. As you can see, gods and miracles were just as important to the healing process as medicine was. Now, what else would you like to do? Very well. May your quest for knowledge be fruitful and fulfilling.